Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today I'm here with a, another Back to Basics baseball game. This game will be between the 1927 Detroit Tigers and the 1927 New York Yankees. Uh, the Yankees won um, 110 games in 1927, and the Tigers won 82. So this may be a bit of a mismatch, but it was one that I pulled out that I figured might be of interest to people. So we will we'll go with that. And I am going to have pennies be, uh, you know, mark the outs and the uh, and the base runners today. So um, if you remember about back to basics baseball, it does not have cards. The game does not come with cards. You can make your own cards, but it doesn't have them. It just has a sheet. Um, PDF sheet with ratings and you write those ratings into the um, into the um, score sheet and and the action takes place according to results on a deck like this and the and the card readings. Today's pitching matchup will be Earl Whitehill for the Tigers and he is a C pitcher. And for the Yankees, it will be Waite Hoyt. And Waite Hoyt is a B pitcher. And so with all of that said, we will get on with the game. The first batter is going to be Heine Manouche of the Tigers. We look at the pitcher section for a B pitcher, and it's a walk if he is a B, C, D, or F at walking people. And he is an A. So it is not a walk, and we will refer to the, um, or wait a minute, no, he's a C. Wait a minute, no, he is, yeah, a B pitcher. So he doesn't walk, the, he doesn't walk Manouche, and that means we refer to the uh, batter section down below right here. And Manouche is a batter B+, plus, and a B plus batter gets a ground out to second base. So that is going to be uh, four to three. Manouche is out. That brings up Bob Fothergill. He is the next batter, and I will move the out marker over, and we'll try to move the... Trying to get everything into the scene, but it's going to be difficult um, with, the way I, with what I have to work with here. Um, so Fothergill is the next batter. We draw the card, and we will look up top at the pitcher's uh, B rating, and that's a walk if he's a C, D, or an F, and he isn't, so we look down below. And Father Gill is an A plus batter, and that is a ground out to the pitcher with a an error check. And uh, the pitcher is an error. Uh, let's see, he's an error A, and as you can see, that's an out. So that was a one to three, and Father Gill is gone, and that brings up Charlie Geringer is the next batter. You look at a B batter, walk if it's a D or an F. They're trying to get him to walk somebody, and he's not hes not going for it. And um, Garinger is an A batter, and an A batter gets a single. So that'll be the first hit for Detroit. There's a man on. Single allowed by Hoyt. And the next batter is Harry Heilman. We go to the B uh, batter, and he gets a strikeout if he's an A, B, C, or a D at striking out somebody. And he is not. He is an F at striking people out. And so um, we go to the, we refer to the out section in that, in that particular case. And the out is, as you can see, a fly out to right field. So that is uh, an F9, and Detroit goes goes down without scoring any runs in the first inning, and we go to the bottom of the first. The first batter for the um, Yankees is Earl Combs. And Earl Combs, we start with a C pitcher, and he's a strikeout if he's an A or a B, I can tell you he is not. He is an F, so we go down, uh, we go to the out section, it's an out to first base, so that's gonna be a ground out to three. 
Tony Lazari is the next batter for the Yankees. C pitcher strikeout if he's an A, B, or C. He isn't, um, and so we go to the um, out section, and that is going to be a fly out to right field. So it's an F9, and Babe Ruth, the Babe, is up. Against a C pitcher, he gets a strikeout if he's an A, B, C, or a D, but he is not, I don't think. No, he is an F. So, um, Ruth is an A-plus batter, and he gets a ground out to second base. So, it's 4-3. to three. And the Yankees go 1-2-3. Whitehill shutting them down. We go to the top of the second inning, where the batter will be Johnny Noon, the first baseman for Detroit. And against a B pitcher, he gets a strikeout if he's an A, which he is not. And so, we go to the out section, it's an F-9. He flies out to right field. Larry Woodall is the next batter. Uh, against a B pitcher, he gets a deep fly to left field. So that is going to be an F7. And there's two down quickly. And uh, yeah, let me try to adjust this so you can see as much of the cards as possible and still see the board. And there is two outs. I'm not good at keeping the outs. So, um, and it, even really the runners on base. Um, so C is against a B pitcher. It's a short fly to left field. So it's an F7. And they go one, two, three, all flying out to outfielders. We go to the bottom of the second inning with um, Lou Gehrig up. Lou Gehrig, the first baseman, of course, for the Yankees. Uh, C pitcher gets a fly out to left field. So that's going to be an F7. Bob Musil is the next batter. Bob Musial, Musial. He gets a strikeout if he's an A pitcher, but he isn't, so it's an out to left field, which is an F7. And Mark Koenig is the, the shortstop, and he's the next batter for the Yankees. And against a C, he gets a swing, and he is a B-plus batter, and he gets a ground out to second base. So that's going to be a 4-3. to three. The Yankees go 1-2-3 there, and they, the Yankees don't have anybody on base yet. Detroit, we're moving to the top of the third, and Detroit will have Jack Warner up. He is the third baseman for Detroit. Against a B pitcher, he gets a walk if he's in walk F. Um, he isn't, so we go down to the batter section, and in the batter section, let's see here. Yeah, and uh, in the batter section, he is a C. We go to C, and it's a ground out to third base. So Warner goes five to three in the third to lead off third, and Earl Whitehill, the pitcher, is the batter. Uh, against a B pitcher, he gets a strikeout if he's an A, B, C, or a D. He is not, so it's an out, and it's an out to second base. Four to three, and Heine Manoush is up. Uh, Heine Manoush against a B pitcher gets a strikeout if he's an a B, C, or a, B, or C. He isn't, so he's an out to center field. And that is going to be an F8. And Detroit goes 1, 2, 3. And we've got a lot of 1, 2, 3 innings here. Um, and so Joe Dugan will be the batter for the Yankees leading off the third inning against a C pitcher. Um... He gets a strikeout if he's an A, B, C, or a D. He isn't, and so it is an out to second base, and Dugan goes 4-3. to three. Next batter is the catcher, Pat Collins. Pat Collins against a C pitcher. He gets a swing, and he is a C-plus batter, and he gets a line out to shortstop. Line out six. The Yankees don't have anybody on yet, and Wade Hoyt, well, with Wade Hoyt being the next batter, you got to think that's not going to happen either. C gets a ground out to the catcher, so it, he goes two to three, and the Yankees go one, two, three for the third consecutive inning to start the game. We're in the top of the fourth of a scoreless tie between the 1927 Detroit Tigers and the 1927 Yankees, and the batter for the Tigers is Bob Fothergill, the uh, left fielder. And against a B batter, he gets a swing, and he is an A-plus batter, and that is a single. So we go reset the thing, and again, I'm not good about that, so don't rely on the fact that the out marker is correct. I'll try to keep on top of it, but there's a lot of moving parts here. 
So we do have a leadoff single by the Tigers, and Garinger is the next batter. Um, Garinger, against a B, gets a swing, and he is an A batter, and an A batter gets a deep fly to right field, so that's going to be an F9. Harry Heilman is the next batter. Against a B, he gets a deep fly to right field, so that's going to be an F9. And uh, Johnny Noon, the first baseman, is the batter. And again, I'll try to keep this up to date. Um, C, uh, or a B pitcher, is a short fly to center. So that's an F8. So after their leadoff batter gets on, Detroit gets nothing else, and the next three batters were retired. We go to the bottom of the fourth. And in the bottom of the fourth, the Yankees are going to send up the top of the order with Earl Combs. Against a C batter, he gets a fly out to right field. So that's just going to be an F9. Tony Lazeri, the second baseman, is the next batter. He does get a swing, and he is an A batter, and an A batter gets a ground out to third base, 5-3. to three. A lot of outs here, not a lot of on base. In fact, Detroit has the only two guys that reached base so far on singles, and um, Babe Ruth is the next batter. Babe Ruth. Uh, against a C pitcher, he gets a swing, and he is an A-plus hitter, and he gets a home run if he's an A, which he is an A, and so that's a home run for Ruth. And that's going to be the first run, hit, everything for the, uh, for the Yankees. And uh, Lou Gehrig is the next batter. Lou Gehrig against a C, gets a swing. He is an A-plus batter, and he gets a home run if he's a B at hitting a home run, and he is, and so you've got two consecutive home runs by two Yankees that give the Yankees a 2 nothing lead, and Bob Musial is the next batter. Against a C pitcher, he gets a swing, and he is an A-plus hitter, and he gets a double. So there's a double, and now all of a sudden the Yankees can't do anything wrong. Koenig is the next batter and against a C pitcher he gets a swing and Koenig is a B plus hitter and he gets a strikeout if he is a strikeout B C D or F and he is um, no he isn't he's good at not striking out so he's an A um, which means that we uh, look at the out section it's an out first base, which will move the runner to third. Ground out three because, you know, the infield wasn't in or anything like that. And Joe Dugan is the next uh, hitter with, I believe, nope, that's it. That was it. So the Yankees are retired in the, uh, in the fourth inning, but not before they get two runs. And we go to the top of the sixth. Um, top of the sixth inning, or no, the top of the fifth inning. Sorry, top of the fifth. For Detroit, Larry Woodall is the batter. Against a B bat, or pitcher, he gets a swing, and he is a an A. What is he? A B. He's a B batter, and he gets a double if he's an A, B, C, or a D at doubling, and he is. Oh wait a minute, no, no, he's an F, so he gets a single instead. He gets a single, but there are no outs. He was the leadoff hitter. Marty McManus, the shortstop, I believe. Yes, next batter. And he gets a, against a B, he gets a swing. He is a C-plus batter. And he gets a fly out to left field. So that's going to be an F7 and one down. Let me try to keep track of that. Um, uh, Jack Warner, the third baseman, against a B strikeout pitcher, or a, a, P, a B pitcher. He gets a strikeout A, B, or C, which it is not, so it is an out to the shortstop, and we will see if it's a double play. Um, it is, let's see here. A, D, so A, D, right here is where you look for that, for the type of out on the infield, and it is actually a... Uh, uh, fielder's choice, so the batter is safe, and uh, Whitehill, the pitcher, is up, 
and Whitehill against a B pitcher gets a strikeout if he's an A, B, C, or a D at striking people out. We know he isn't, so it's an out to third base, which is five to three, and Detroit gets no runs in the fifth. We go to the bottom of the fifth, and the batter for the Yankees will be Joe Dugan in the fifth inning, and we gotta reset this counter and take this guy off the base. And uh, C pitcher gets a strikeout of an ABC. He is not, so it's an out to second. It's four to three. Dugan is out four to three. One down quickly, and Pat Collins is the next batter. Pat Collins against the C gets a strikeout of an ABC or a D, and he is not, so he's an out to third. It's five to three. And Wait Hoyt is the next batter. Um, against a C, he gets a swing. And he is a D batter, and a D batter gets a ground out to first with a possible range check. And uh, the range on the first baseman, that is noon, and he has a range of B, and so we can see on range B, he's an out. So that is a ground out to first. The Yankees go back to their habit this game of not scoring any runs, and we go to the top of the sixth, where we will see the top of the order in Heine Manouche of Detroit. And against a B batter, he just gets a strikeout. So that is actually the first strikeout that became a real strikeout. Um, Bob Fothergill is the next batter. And against a B, he gets a strikeout. So the next two guys strike out for Detroit, and Geringer is the batter. And against a B, he strikes out the side. So Wade Hoyt strikes the side out. Detroit doesn't need that. They still need two runs, and we're in the bottom of the sixth with the leadoff hitter Earl Combs up against a C pitcher. He gets a swing, and Combs is a, an A+, plus, and he gets a strikeout if he is a D or an F at striking out, which he is not. And so really what that is is it's going to be an out to second base. So it's 4-3. Tony Lazari is the next batter. Against a C pitcher, he gets a swing, and he is a, an A batter, and he gets a home run if he is a B-plus at home run, which he is not, so it's a deep fly to left field, so it's an F7. And that brings up the Babe, who has a home run this game. Against a C pitcher, he gets a swing, he's an A-plus, he gets a walk if he's an A, B, C, or a D at walking, and you got to know that he is, um, and he is. So he does get a walk. And the Babe has, well, he's hit a home run and been on base. And Lou Gehrig is the next batter. Against a C pitcher, he gets a swing. And he is an A-plus hitter. And that's a strikeout if he's a D or an F at striking out. Probably isn't. And so uh, that would be an out to the shortstop, which will be 6-3. to three. And uh, no runs come in for the Yankees. In the sixth, but maybe they don't need any more because Wade Hoyt is shutting Detroit right down. And they will send up Harry Heilman against him to try to get some runs. Against a B, he strikes out. That He's struck out four straight guys now. Johnny Noon is up. Johnny Noon against a C um, or against a B gets a swing. And he is an A-plus hitter. He gets a walk if he's an A, B, C, or a D at walking. And um, he is. So he gets a walk. So he's aboard. And that is only the one, two, three. That's only the fourth guy to reach base for Detroit with Woodall, the next hitter. Against a B pitcher, he gets a swing. He is an um B batter, and a B batter gets a home run if he's an A, which he is not. Otherwise, it's a deep fly to center field. So it's an F8, and there's two down, and McManus is the batter. And against a C pitcher, he gets, or against a B pitcher, he gets a swing, and he is a C-plus hitter, and a C-plus hitter gets a ground out to first base with a possible range check. And the first baseman is Gehrig, and he's going to have good range. You know that, and that's a B, and he's an out. So that's a ground out to three. And Detroit gets nothing in the seventh. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. And Bob Musial is the batter against a C pitcher. He gets a swing, 
and um, he is an A plus batter. All these guys, A pluses. He gets a double if he's an A B C or a D at doubling, which he probably is. Um, and yes, he is. So he gets a double. Lead off double for Bob Musial. Koenig is up. And it's notable that Detroit doesn't really have a good bullpen. They don't have good pitchers behind uh, White Hill. So it really should be White Hill's game to win or lose. Koenig, the next batter, gets to C. He gets a swing. He is a B plus. He gets a strikeout if he's a CD or an F at striking out. Um, and he isn't. But it is an out. It's an out to second base. And it is a double play. So it's going to be a 4-6-3 double play. As you can see right there, DP. And with two down, Joe Dugan for the Yankees is the batter. He gets a swing against a C, and he is a C-plus batter, I believe. Let's see. Yep. And that is a fly out to right. So that's going to be an F9. The Yankees hold their slim 2-0 lead on home runs by Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig in the fourth inning. And we go to the top of the eighth. In the top of the eighth, it'll be Jack Warner is the batter. Um, and against a B, he gets a swing. And he is a C-plus batter, and he gets a fly out to left. F7, there, um, or wait a minute. Where are we? Top of the eighth. It's F, okay, it's an F7 for Warner. Um... And uh, White Hill is the next batter. Now there's already an out, and they're just going to let him hit. Uh, B, pitcher gets a swing, and he is an F at hitting. He gets a fly out to left. So he gets an F7 as well, and Manoush is the batter. Manoush against a B pitcher, he gets a swing, and he is an A plus batter, and he gets a single. So we're going to say, and we're going to put on two outs and a man at first. Manoush getting a hit, and Father Gill is the batter. Father Gill gets, um, against a B pitcher, he gets a swing, and he is an A-plus batter, and he gets a single two asterisk. So Detroit is threatening now. And maybe they should have let the pitcher, maybe they should have pinch hit for White Hill. We'll see. Um, but the Yankees are going to play the infield back because they're ahead 2-0. Uh, well, anyway, and there's two outs, so uh, the next batter is Garinger, and Garinger, against a B, gets a swing. He is an A batter, and he gets a double two bases, so now they have a little concern because um, it's two to one, and there's a man 90 feet away with Harry Heilman, who is a good hitter, up at the plate. And against a B, he gets a swing, and he is an A-plus batter, and he gets a single two asterisk and drives in two runs and give Detroit a lead. So there is a big change of events right there. All of a sudden, and now that doesn't really hurt Detroit that they let White Hill hit, because now he has a lead and it's all up to him. Noon is the batter. He gets... Uh, against a B, gets a deep fly to center. So that came at just the right time. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gotten the three all three of those runs. And they do take a 3-2 to two lead as we go to the bottom of the eighth. With the Yankees up and sending Pat Collins, the catcher, up. And against a C, he gets a ground out to shortstop. So that's going to be 6-3. Uh, to three. Wait Hoyt is the batter. Same, well... No, they're going to let him hit because they, they're going to have the big guys coming up in the ninth, even if, they're, if they get nothing here. Against the C, he gets a line out to third base. Line out to five, and Combs is the batter. And this is back in the day when pitchers just were not taken out of the game. C is a pop out to third base. So pop out five. The Yankees get nothing there. They're down by a run. We go to the top of the ninth where Detroit holds a 3-2 lead and has Larry Woodall coming up to bat against Hoyt, who is a, a B pitcher, and that's a strikeout if he gets uh, if he is a strikeout A or B. 
at pitching and he isn't so it's an out to the shortstop so that's going to be 6-3 the batter is Marty McManus against a B pitcher he gets a strikeout if he's an A striking people out he isn't so it's a ground ball to the shortstop 6-3 and Jack Warner is the batter and against a C he gets a walk if he is a walking people C, D, or F um, and uh, let's see if he is um, he is not so he is good at not walking people and so that is going to be uh, we're going to refer to the uh, batter section I believe you do that and so the batter is a C and he gets a walk if he is an A or a B at walking and Warner is not so he is an out and it's an out to shortstop six to three so they all went six three we go to the bottom of the night the Yankees are down by a run three to two they got their two runs on homers by Ruth and Gehrig we will get to Ruth this inning at least and maybe Gehrig if somebody can get on but Lazari is the first batter Whitehill this is Whitehill's game to win or lose and he's a C pitcher. He gets a walk if he's a D or an F at walking people. And I don't... He is. He is a D at walking people. So that's a walk. First batter is a board. Lazari. That's trouble. That is trouble right there. Gehrig is the next batter. Against a C, he gets a ground out to first base with a possible error check, I believe. Yeah, error check, ground out to first. Noon is an F at being an error and it is an error and since it just says E it's only a one base error so they've got the first two guys on and this is going to be a terrible way to lose this game but Gehrig is uh, Gehrig is the batter with two guys on and um, nobody out and he gets uh, against a C, gets a ground out to second base with a range check. The second baseman's range, that is Geringer. He is, um, he is a, an A at range at second base. So an A range, it's an out. And we can see from the uh, red that it's, uh, an, it's a fielder's choice. So we got a fielder's choice. Runners are now at the corners with one out. And what they're going to do is, with Bob Musial, they're going to bring the infield in because they have no choice but to do that. And uh, he, against the C, is a walk. So that loads the bases. Now with the bases loaded, they could gamble. Well, I mean, they could have last time, too. Uh, they could gamble and try to hope for the double play, and that's what they're going to do. That's their best hope of getting this game over with. Uh, Koenig is up, and Whitehill is a C pitcher. He gets a swing from Koenig, and Koenig is a B-plus batter, and he gets a fly out to left field, and that is just a routine fly out. Uh, runners do not score. So it's two down. Um... And that was um, fly out, what was that? Fly out to left, yeah, fly out to left field. So it's an F7. There's two down, it all comes down to Joe Dugan. Joe Dugan. Against a C, he gets a pop out to second base and that's gonna be a pop out to four and that ends the game and the final score is the Detroit Tigers three and the New York Yankees, too. The Yankees of 1927 have lost to the Detroit Tigers. And that is going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.